Hey everybody, so today's video is about Bitcoin and it wouldn't be a year in review or like a documentation of my life if I didn't talk about Bitcoin. Um, since the beginning of the year and even a few months prior to the, the new year, Bitcoin has been slowly declining in price and um, we're getting to the point right now where a lot of people are freaking out about um, the price and um, whether we're going to enter a bear market and um, all this stuff. So I thought it would be useful um, if I talked about um, just Bitcoin in general and then what I think is in the future um, as well as what people should do if they're interested into trading or investing um, and just whatever. All right, so we first have to start with what is Bitcoin and Honestly, Bitcoin is a lot of things. It's like a very powerful tool, right? So it's gonna be different for everybody, but for me, and this is true also for everybody, right? It depends on how you use Bitcoin, but um, for me, Bitcoin is a fair money. And what do I mean by that? So um, it's a money that can't be manipulated, right? It can't be um, inflated and it won't lose its value due to somebody else creating more of it. Um, it is censorship resistant, so um, your bank um, can stop you from making certain purchases if they're illegal or um, considered um, like taboo. With, with Bitcoin, you can send money um, and buy anything, um, illegal or legal, right? And that's powerful. Um, you can send money around the world almost instantaneously, or instantaneously, if you use Lightning Network, which is very cool. Um, so it's just, it's a fair, non-stoppable money that can transport anywhere. So you can send value anywhere around the world. And to me, that is such, it's such a powerful tool. And I keep telling people um, about like how amazing that is and I don't think it clicks for people yet because they haven't reached those circumstances yet, but eventually it will. Everybody has those moments where Bitcoin just clicks, um, and I hope you guys experience that too. So that's what Bitcoin is. So let's get into why Bitcoin is important, right? So Bitcoin is important to have because it's a way to protect your value, right? So just like with most investment vehicles, um, you want to buy like a stock or a, a house um, or gold, right, in the hopes that the value of it relative to the US dollar goes up. Um, and with Bitcoin, over time, especially over four year periods, no one has ever lost money over four years. And that's one of the most important um, properties that it has. And because it's a finite supply, right, there can never be any more created other than what's going to be planned to be created. So we have a 21 million Bitcoin cap. Um, <clears throat> every 10 minutes, right, new Bitcoins are created. Um, and then people can buy or sell those new ones. But as far as once we hit the 21 million, there can be no more ever created. So um, that's really important um, because once you have a piece of that Bitcoin ecosystem, the, the percentage that you own can never be diluted. So imagine you bought like $100,000 worth of gold, right? Um, right now there's meteors in space that are full gold or like 60% gold. And Jeff Bezos or whoever is trying to, to harvest those meteors to take the gold and whatever other precious metals are in space, right? And then that would dilute the amount of gold that's in the earth. Also, the gold on earth, um, there's like a 2% inflation of gold um, because miners are still um, finding gold and mining it out of the earth. So um, we don't know what the total supply of gold is, right? And I think that's a very important property of Bitcoin. And that's what makes it important is that if you want to protect your wealth, you have that option. And then along with all the other uh, properties that it has, um, of being fair money and uh, like instantly transportable and uh, non-physical. I think it's I think it's very um, it's such a powerful tool, 
right? Okay, cool. So I briefly went over what is Bitcoin and why it's important. So now I want to go on to um, the price of it all, right? And I think that's one thing that people ask me the most about is like, is now a good time to buy? Um, when they do buy it high and it goes low, like should they sell? What's going on? All that stuff, right? So people definitely get emotional when it comes to money because money is how we live, right? And especially too, like I said, if the US dollar is being manipulated, um, then you don't want how you live to be manipulated in a negative way, right? Um, another another uh, way to think about it too is like we trade our time for money, right? You work an eight hour day or however many hours you work and you get compensated for that with money. If the value of that degrades, right, then they're degrading your time post back and you can never get that that time back. So I think it's important to try to protect your time as much as you can, right? So what was I saying? All right, about investing. Price goes up and down, right? So the best way to get into to Bitcoin or any asset, and of course this is not financial advice, but um, one of the best strategies to get in to avoid the volatility is to dollar cost average. So that means picking an amount that you wanna buy and picking an interval of time that you're willing to spread it out over. So I always go with, let's say you have a thousand dollars that you want to invest in Bitcoin. Um, every Friday, you put a hundred dollars in, regardless of what the price is, right? So every Friday, for ten weeks, you put a hundred dollars into Bitcoin, right? If the price goes down after you make your first purchase, that's okay because you still have nine hundred dollars to buy more the following Friday right? If you buy 100 on the first Friday and the price goes up, it doesn't matter that you haven't put the rest in because the little that you bought is already in profit. So psychologically, you should feel okay like, oh, I'm already making money. I have more money than I did yesterday. So that should also ease your tension. When it gets kind of choppy, so like let's say you buy it, the price goes down, and then you're like, damn, I wish I bought when it was lower. And then all of a sudden the price is above where it was, right? And you're thinking, oh man, now it's just gonna take off from here. Like I didn't get the perfect dip price. No one ever gets the perfect dip price. So kind of get that out of your mind. Like you're never gonna buy the bottom. No one's ever bought the bottom, right? I mean, like obviously like some people have, that's what sets a bottom. Um, but for an average trader, don't even think about trying to nail the bottom. Think about just trying to get an average price around the bottom. Um, because the only thing that matters is like the middle chunk, right? Like, let's say, let's say you bought, there's my cat. Let's say you bought, um, Bitcoin, uh, like I did. So, um, my average price, like, I don't know what it is now, but from like back in the day, it was around 10K, right? And so now we just dipped into the 30 Ks, right? So let's say, I, let's say I sold right now, right? I didn't sell at 60 K, but I sold at 30 K and I would have made a 20 K profit. Um, that's, that's the important part, right? Even though I guess right now we're like right in the middle. So, um, I wouldn't like recommend anybody sell like let's say I sold at 58 instead of 62 like that four thousand dollars like sure it would have been nice to have but like I would have made for 40k if that makes sense sorry I kind of switched up the example midway I'm gonna let my cat out real quick Are you closing? all right <sighs> okay so dollar cost average so for me personally what I'm doing is I'm spending ten dollars a day on Bitcoin. So maybe that's equivalent to, I don't know what kind of orders you have at Starbucks, but maybe that's like the equivalent to your coffee plus boba for the day, or uh, instead of um, eating two meals a day out, like you start cooking one meal and you, you save that that $10 lunch and you put it into Bitcoin, right? So that's, that's the ideology that I'm thinking of. And from the last market cycle, right? The peak being 2017 or 2018, whatever the 19K um, top was to um, last year. If over four years, I think it was if you put um, $10 a day into Bitcoin, 
um, you would have put in roughly like fourteen thousand dollars, and then um, at the prices they were last year, and I guess still this year, um, you would have had a hundred thousand dollars. So that's like a ten x over four years, right? Um, and if you have any questions, definitely um, let me know. Um, I can explain further. Um, I really enjoy talking about this kind of stuff. Um, but if that example didn't make sense, I can like send you um, some Excel spreadsheets um, that kind of further clarify. Or, or we can like, you know, meet up and I can show you on paper um, or just explain again in a, in a more time uh, uh, allowable manner, I guess, right? Cool. So that's how I recommend people get into Bitcoin or any asset. And the thing is, right, you're not going to get rich overnight. Everybody believes that they can get rich really quickly. So that's why Doge, the um, like the hype for it last year was like insane. Everybody was like, oh, it's going to go to a dollar right now. It's at 16 cents, right? The high was like, I think, 75 cents. Um, so some people are down bad, but, you know, who knows? Maybe it still might hit a dollar. Um, but yeah, so bull market phases and bear market phases don't really matter to me because I'm going to buy regardless of where we are. Um, and there's other trading things that I'm looking at that um, I think are really important, but they're not important for this video. So if you want to learn more about trading Bitcoin specifically, um, leave a comment or message me and I will explain more. Um, what else? Let's see. Cool. All right. So where do I think it's going in the future? Um, there's so much positive um, momentum behind the fundamentals of Bitcoin. And I think a lot of people are only looking at the price. So um, right now, Lightning Network is growing so quickly, right? You have Jack, who is going to add Lightning to, Twi uh, to Cash App, I believe. Well, he already added it to Twitter. Um, so, like I said before, Lightning is how you can send um, Bitcoin like almost instantaneously um, around the world, right? I know a lot of people have been sending money from the U.S. to El Salvador um, to test out their their Lightning capacities, and that's amazing. Um, so. Um, the development behind Lightning is making Bitcoin both a store of value and a medium of exchange. And that's going to be so cool, right? So now, like, to me, Bitcoin is complete money that I could use at my discretion, right? Um, miners, I saw, I saw a graph on Twitter that said this is the first time that miners are um, completely profitable. I don't know what, if that's the right way to phrase it. Um, but I guess, I guess, um, their expense for electricity for some of them, right, is, uh, zero, right? They don't pay for the electricity, like either it's solar power or geothermal or hydro, but the cost of paying for electricity is now negative, right? So they're generating their own electricity to mine Bitcoin and they're holding on to all the Bitcoin that they're mining, they are not selling it like they had to before to cover expenses. And that's going to be a huge development. Um, Michael Saylor is going to have his uh, Bitcoin for Corporations um, at the beginning of February. And I'm really excited um, about hearing those presentations. Because um, last year they really lit a fire under me to, to keep buying. And um, I think it, it paid off well, right? What else? Cool. And then legislation in the U.S. A lot of Congress people are looking very positively into Bitcoin and trying to understand it. And there are a lot of Congress um, Congress members that are stupid, like they are with everything, right? But um, there's nothing that you can do to stop Bitcoin as far as uh, the government is concerned. Like, they can make it illegal to to have but people are gonna move you know you're gonna lose innovation um when china banned mining all the miners came to north america and now north america is like primed to become another a powerhouse again 
and not just the United States, like Canada has a lot of miners. Um, the U.S. has a lot of miners. Um, and so now if, if any major country adopts Bitcoin as El Salvador did last year, um, things are going to get crazy anyway. Um, so I'm hopeful and I'm bullish. Um, I believe the development of Bitcoin is going to keep getting stronger. The adoption is going to increase and then eventually there is going to be a, a price appreciation because of those things, right? And I don't know how long it's gonna take, but over four years, no one has ever lost money and I am willing to wait. So that's another piece of advice I'll give everybody is to be patient, right? Um, you can try to trade um, anything else that's flashy and good luck, right? You need to know when to sell, but if you're trying to preserve your wealth just by Bitcoin, get into it slowly, hold it for a long time, never sell it. Um, cool. Some other stuff that I think is very interesting is um, there are a few companies now that are offering mortgages where you could use your Bitcoin as collateral. So like I said, never sell. You don't have to sell, right? If you wanted to buy a house, you could use your Bitcoin as collateral to help in getting your loan to buy that house, right? Um, so this is a very exciting, um, yeah, D if, yeah, I think, I think this is a good place to end the video. If anyone has any questions, definitely leave them below or message me. All right, bye.